Hi and welcome to my video series of Biotechniques Explained in 5 Minutes where I explain a concept of biology in less than 5 minutes or so. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button. By the way, I'm also present in An Academy and if you want to join An Academy, use my code AP10 for getting 10% discount and my lectures are present there. In this installment, we are going to talk about affinity chromatography. As the name suggests, the affinity chromatography, the principle of affinity chromatography is the affinity interaction between two molecules. So in this lecture, let's try to understand what is the affinity and what, how it is the basis of the separation. Just like any chromatographic technique, affinity chromatography is also used to separate proteins or let's say nucleic acid or small molecules. Chromatographic techniques has four basic steps. Equilibration, when equilibration buffer runs to the column and make the column weight and make it more applicable for the sample binding. Then the binding step itself, where you provide your sample, it might be DNA, might be protein, etc. And your protein is bound to the affinity column by a specific molecular interaction, which are mostly non-covalent in nature. Now the weak, there are also weak and non-specific binding which you can get rid of by a washing step while you wash those with a specific wash buffer which can denature the weak interactions but retain the strong interaction by that you can get rid of all the non-specific binding and they are washed away later you can change the buffer composition and pH and as a result you can elute the proteins that you want to do want to work on so that is how you can get your purified protein now Affinity purification is based on the affinity column. So this column is packed with beads and let's take a simplest example. Here the bead is associated with several antibodies which is destined against this particular protein which is bluish in color. It doesn't bind to the protein which is brown in color. So in a mixture of protein we have both this brown protein and this blue protein but our antibody is destined against this particular blue protein so it would retain that blue protein in the column and in the wash step these kind of brown protein and many other proteins would be washed away but the, our protein of interest would be retained into the column and after that we can elude that to get our protein of interest one of the most popular type of tags that is used these days is known as histag protein purification here you synthesize your protein in such a way that it has a N-terminal histidine tag, a hexahistidine tag. Now histidine has a high affinity for nickel NTA matrix. Now the, the nitrogen of the histidine ring actually form coordination bond with the NINTA matrix and that's how it attaches a protein with the NINTA matrix. And that's how the proteins which are present in the stationary phase get immobilized on the beads and later by changing the buffer composition, this coordinate bond can be dissolved and as a result, the proteins can be eluted. Now the biggest advantage of this technique, it's very, very specific. But also a disadvantage is like if you use an immunoaffinity based method, you might not have antibody for any type of protein that you want to purify. In that case, histag protein, protein purification or GST tag protein purification is very useful where you put the tag and using that tag to anchor your protein and retain it to the matrix. Now in case of histag protein purification, you first clone your gene of interest into a plasmid which has an N-terminal histag and this expression vector would express the protein inside the bacteria with a histag and as the bacteria grows, you get the bacteria out and smash it and get the lysate, run it through the column to purify your protein of interest. That is how a histag protein purification works. Instead of this histidine tag, there could be other tags such as flag tags, MIC tags, or sometimes also GST tags. So there are various type of tags, but the principle is very simple. You retain that, you retain your annihilate molecule with the help of these tag because something is specifically binding with high affinity with this tag. Now, for all of these different type of columns, the basic principle is same. First, it starts with equilibration, sample binding, followed by wash and elution. And that is how you get your purified protein, right? Now, not only protein can be purified within with this technique, DNA can also be purified using affinity-based interaction. So there are specific columns present, micro columns which are present, 
which employs silicon or sodium silicate as a column material. Now, sodium silicate is positively charged, so it can retain the DNA, which is negatively charged due to its phosphate backbone. And as a result, it would retain the DNA, allow everything else to flow out. Now, first, you add your DNA sample, which is not pure, maybe having several other impurities such as phenol, let's say protein, etc. Allow this thing to pass through this column, and this is the binding step. After that, you wash it with a wash buffer, so all the non specific bindings are like washed away and later on you use a elution step and centrifuge it such that you get the eluent so the eluent is your purified dna right and this is how you can purify dna using affinity principles there are recent days development of affinity chromatography by which you can purify actively transcribing mrnas from a cell and this is called ribosome tagging so the principle is if a particular point of time a particular cell is giving rise to giving rise to specific genes or expressing some genes so those genes would be actually present in the ribosomes and it would be producing proteins right and now if we can somehow pull down the ribosomes we are able to pull down the active transcript with it so with genetic method you put a tag in the ribosome and followed by a anti gf let's say the tag is gfp and followed by an anti gfp bead you can pull down the whole complex of bead ribosome and the mrna along with it later on you can use qpcr based method to detect which mrna actually came down with it so it's called a ribo pull down assay which is also based on the affinity principle so you can use the same affinity principle in several different ways to purify several different type of annihilate molecules so i hope this video was informative if you like my video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you